you're so busy doubting yourself why so many others are intimidated by your potential you are so busy doubting yourself why so many others are out there being intimidated by your potential it is without motivational quote that we say welcome to today's edition of 360 degrees on seven harmony coming to you live from yaoundé capital of cameroon and on today's edition of the program we have as menu uh, we are going to talk about the passing away of uh, batonier ben muna at the age of 79 what legacy has the great politician and uh, magistrate left behind we are going to be discussing all that and on scoop today we shall be talking about the new head coach of the indomitable lions of Cameroon, Tony Concesau, who takes charge this FIFA break that's in some days ahead. We shall be examining and questioning what must have motivated Cameroon's faker foot to pick Antonio Concesau as head coach of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon. And on Talking Point today, we shall be exploring perspectives, opinions, and challenges with regard to teachers in Cameroon. As we all know, the 5th of October was celebrated as Teachers' Day. That's it for our lineup. After the break, we get rolling. <laughs> Welcome back on board. We get the show rolling today. Uh, on a sad note, we are talking about the passing away yesterday at the age of 79 in Yaoundé of uh, Batonye Ben Muna of the great Muna's family. Uh, ben Muna reportedly passed away due to a cardiac arrest in a hospital here in Yaoundé. And uh, Ben Muna, we recall, was 2011 presidential candidate representing the party uh, party uh, alliance of progressive forces in Cameroon and Ben Muna leaves behind a huge legacy and of course so many millions of Cameroonians to mourn him we recall Ben Muna was chairperson for the international anti-corruption conference he was equally co-founder of the most reputable law firm in Cameroon uh, adopt Muna and Muna along with his brother Akere Muna. He was equally former president of Cameroon Bar Association and he equally served as deputy prosecutor at the International Criminal Tribunal in Rwanda and Ben Muna was equally founder of Cameroon's political party entitled Alliance of Progressive Forces, a party which he represented in the 2011 presidential elections which of course he didn't win Batonye Moon has passed away and today we are observing uh, giving respect giving tribute to this great political figure and also this great figure in the lead in the legal domain and uh, to talk uh, barrister Ben Muna with me now is uh, Adamu Shaibu. Good evening. Good evening, Adi. How are you doing? I'm fine, and you? Oh, uh, I'm okay. Just that we are beginning the show on a sad note today. So, uh, what do you make of such a great personality? How great a loss is uh, that of uh, barrister Ben Muna? Yes, uh, Adi Divine is rather unfortunate. We are beginning with uh, a sad note. I mean, something that we're talking about the loss of a great one. And I feel uh, people like Muna, they are those people who have been ahead and those who have uh, maybe should have been in front and then lead our way. I mean, to make, tell us that the youth, this is what you follow. I remember so, uh, his famous interview where he said, Cameroonians should fight for their right. And uh, that, the, the, that the right, a right is not given, a right is taken away. And I think uh, these are the type of uh, these are the ideologies we have to put in our heads. And then, I, the only thing I remember or I will say is that he is, uh, how should I say, he is uh, that great man. And losing uh, such a great man surely is something that is, is is not good at all. It's really not good at all for a nation like Cameroon. And uh, when you talk about the interview he granted uh, 
during which she said uh, power is not taken, uh, power is not given, power yeah. is taken. I think it sums up the man, it sums up what a warrior the man was. Because uh, this same man in uh, 1992, some keep it as his greatest legacy in 1992, when he had the balls to uh, oppose his father who has been ally, who had been ally yes. to two <laughs> ruling governments in Cameroon and rather join the main opposition party, the Social Democratic Front. So that spelled the man, that uh, captured the personality of a man who listens to no one but his own heart and his own intentions and uh, who was a man of his words. Yes, I divine a man of his word, like you said. You know, if you are saying that uh, you should not you should not wait for power to be given to you and then you should take it yourself it is like in all domain it doesn't matter whatever you're doing it means everything you are doing in life you are building yourself not someone else and i believe that uh, talking about uh, the social democratic the, the the sdf the main opposition party in cameroon they missed him a lot when he left the, 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 the that party something 2010 and created his own opposition party so it was a great loss to the sdf because such an influential person left the party and it, it became somehow difficult to pick up again and uh, i feel that this uh there, 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 there is a type of muna there are those people that can can, can that is you can follow and then feel that uh you have the right to take the decision whatever decision you are taking because it told you it is your right to do whatever you plan to do but then don't take it the wrong way take it the right way and then seize it it is yours that is your happiness depends on you not on someone else exactly your happiness depends on you not on someone else and we thank god for social media because uh, all the interviews the remarkable interviews that uh, ben muna granted the press are still well kept on the social media so even generations to come can still benefit from his uh, wonderful wisdom well uh, i think that was it uh, talking about this great figure we can only wish him uh, a good rest and uh, a safe journey to eternity just say r.i.p rest in peace exactly dear televiewers after the break we are going to talk football on our segment scoop Welcome back on board. It is time for Scoop and on Scoop today we go full, full, full football and we are beginning from home and where we talk about the new head coach of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon. We all recall Cameroon was booted out of the of the last edition of the Africa Cup of Nations in, Nations in Egypt at the round of 16 in a very dismal way and following that elimination, uh, head coach Clarence Seedorf and uh, Patrick Cluvet were shown the door and ever since we have been waiting for a replacement and just days back uh, Portuguese born Antonio Conceição was chosen by Faker Foot to replace Clarence Seedorf and was given the gargantuan task to prepare the indomitable Lions of Cameroon for the Africa Cup of Nations 2021 to be staged in Cameroon. To talk about the choice of Antonio Conceição, I still have Adamu Shaibu here with me. Yes, Adi Divine, uh, that is winning the AFCON 2021 and qualifying to the World Cup 2022 out there in Qatar is the objective, there is a primary objective given to the new boss of the Cameroon Indomitable Lions. But then, what about this legend? Who is this This man giving this hot seat? Remember, it is a hot seat, Adi. Like you said, uh, it is uh, a hot seat because Clarence Sidov was shown the doors when he failed to take the Lions to an expected position in the just ended Afcon, but then they look for someone not not a famous name this time around not someone that how we have been hearing of all this time all 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 over in football but a name that cameroonian needs to go back to the google write it and then follow up the biography of this of this man tony Consecao. he is a former portuguese footballer even though he played just once for the national football team and he played a number of club matches but then 
he was not that name that was really known he was an average player but he also came up as a coach that average coach he is coming at the international level for the first time having having had other spells with clubs out there in romania in saudi arabia and uh, in other in other parts of these areas to show that he is a, a little bit qualified but then cameroonians have been waiting for someone who is from cameroon someone like patrick boma someone like uh, raiga besong bahana but then Fekka Foot made a choice, a choice that surprised many and a choice that many came back to ask what really motivated them. It is still a question that is flying. What motivated the, the, the sports minister and the Fekka Foot bosses to say this is the right man for this decision? Surely, if something motivated them, it is something that they have seen, that they have equally seen, that those who have been having those big names, the big names are not delivering. Therefore, it is time to look for someone who is competent enough but is not well known to be brought in that position. He is surely having the pressure to do and cover the assignments given to him, but then taking the indomitable lines of Cameroon is a big task, Adi. It's a gargantuan task, uh, indeed, Adam Ushaibu. And of course, uh, Antonio Consensao or Tony Consensao, as he is fondly called, will begin his uh, huge task against Tunisia, the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia, on Saturday, the 12th of October 2019. And uh, is quite a difficult match because uh, Tunisia is uh, some sort of uh, a great footballing power in Africa. Yes, uh, Adi, they perform very well in the World Cup and uh, we believe that this time around Cameroon, it is time to say we are back because we are playing against Tunisia in Tunis. That is the Tunisia they are playing at home and I think uh, this man is having pressure. He needs to prove because the fans out here in Cameroon, they don't know him, they want to know him and knowing him is playing the first match exactly now i was about asking how difficult it is to use friendly games to prepare a team for a tournament as huge as the afcon we know that competitive games are better because during competitive game uh, competitive games players give their all the opposition to comes well prepared so you can easily have a clear understanding a clear evaluation of the competence of your side so how difficult is it for Tony to prepare Cameroon for AFCON 2021, a historic AFCON 2021, using just friendly encounters? Yes, Adi, I think it's a very difficult task because you need to change your, your effective, the team that plays, your, your team always. But on the other hand, I think it's also a good news for Tony because he is coming in to just play good those news for matches. him or good for news us? for him. Okay. But for us, I don't think it's a good news. Because he is coming to play friendly matches and that demands are not there as uh, competitive matches, maybe in a competition. So maybe losing some and drawing other matches and winning others will be, will, will, be, will be a little bit good for him and then he will be building the team. Maybe it will be a good, it will be a good side for us if he is to be a long-term coach. But for a short-term coach at, at this position is not a good thing for us. But it's a good thing for him. Maybe he will he will have that chance to build up and then study his team. Because uh, you know, playing against um, maybe playing in, in an Afcon, you cannot be testing players. But you can do test players in, uh, in maybe during friendly matches. And maybe he takes his own chances to test these these players and then try to choose. Okay. Now, uh, before coming back to the same subjects, let's look at uh, other. Uh, applicants to this very huge job as uh, uh, running the national team of Cameroon. We had uh, Patrick Boma who obtained his coaching license back in 2015 but uh, hasn't done much with respect to gaining experience in football uh, apart from coaching the, the junior side of Paris FC there in France and the rest of his time we all know he has dedicated it to Ponditry being on TV to talk about European matches. Uh, but then Cameroonians have a feeling that even with the lack of experience on uh, the side of Patrick Boma, he could still have made a better pick than Tony Concesao. On what basis do you think their arguments spring from? Yes, I think I, I feel the same. Because um, Patrick Boma is a legend in Cameroon. He's a legend in national football team. He's, uh, he's someone who players of first of all respect. When you feel that uh, Patrick Boma is your head coach, I think your determination is different. And uh, you equally feel that uh, Patrick Boma have done a lot of assignments. Maybe he has already uh, printed his name as a legend in the football in, in, in Cameroon football. 
So young players, many young players are looking up to Patrick Boma. And if they are being coached, if, if maybe if they are trained or coached by Patrick Boma, they have different determination. You're talking about uh, like the Pep Guardiola, the Pep Guardiola the Zidane. Zinedine Zidane effect. Good. That's what I'm Simeone talking effect. about. Uh, maybe maybe uh, Guardiola is a little bit different. Yeah. He is not that legend. Yes. But uh, Zidane. Zinedine Zidane is a legend in Madrid. And uh, if he is called up by players in Real, he, they know his famous performance in the year 2000, 2002, uh, sorry, 2000, 2003, and so on. But um, I feel that having Boma will be something great. And um, they feel that uh, they, are, they are being coached by a legend. It's true that you have not uh, seen this for, for maybe for a long time. But if you look at it very well, I'm not comparing with, uh, with Zinedine Zidane. He came from a, from a second, from, from maybe from the B team. Yes. He came from the B that team. That was playing in the third division. Third division. That was all about his experience as a coach. He came up from there and took the, the, the Real Madrid team and won three Champions League in three years with La Liga. I think that was good. It was not because he is, he is uh, he's a master, but because he was able to manage the players. Manage the players because he knows the mentality of players, those who play in Bernabeu. Patrick Bowman knows the mentality of those who are playing in Fandena or the uh, Amado Ayu Stadium. He knows what the fans want and he knows what to do so as to, uh, to remove the best out of a Cameroonian. Okay. He will know what a Cameroonian can produce. He knows what Cameroonians playing abroad, what they can do, and those at home, what they can do. I think Tony have the fa his first assignment is for us to see whether he is able to choose a home base. And Patrick Boma will not have that such a difficulty. So I think, tr truly, I don't know the decision of uh, Fekafu choosing Boma ahead of, uh, choosing uh, Tony ahead of the likes of Patrick Boma. But if there should be one, maybe it is about the paper cash. I don't know if Boma was demanding high. <laughs> I don't know. But I think it, 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 maybe many Cameroonians were expecting that we should have, uh, we should go back to the drawing board. Going back exactly. to the drawing board is choosing our, a Cameroonian. Like Senegal has done, like Algeria has done, and those two countries were finalists at the recent AFCON uh, 2019. Yeah, even, even Nigeria, maybe in the previous years, With Nigeria Stephen has been Keshi, choosing. Yeah. yeah, Stephen Keshi, we have uh, Shaibo, Amadou, and so on. They brought up the system and then later gave it to the foreigners. Maybe that is what we need, I don't know. Exactly. Now, the other person, the other applicant was Gospoit. Gospoit has a uh, some uh, degree of experience in Europe, having coached uh, in Italy, having coached in France, having coached in Spain. Uh, but we have a feeling that uh, what he demanded, his financial demands were not met. Yes, Abe, like I said, I think uh, majority of these things is about the, the demands. So if uh, Gospel was supposed to be there, we know Patrick Boma is surely ahead of that man. Maybe even the Tony himself, but I feel that uh, Tony is a better choice. Now let's talk about another Cameroonian. He did not apply, but we have the impression that he is preparing himself for this, uh, for the number one hot seat uh, with regard to sport in Cameroon. We are talking about Rigo Best, some so, former team captain, oh, a man who coached, uh, who, who captains the the boat for. More than two decades, we are talking about Pat, uh, uh, Rigo uh, Bet Song, who is currently in charge of the under 23 Lions. He sat quiet, he didn't apply, but we have a feeling that he keeps on accumulating the experience to one day say, Okay, I'm going to be the Aliu CC of Cameroon. Yeah, you know, uh, Adi, I think there is uh, time for everything. And you know, after the sack of, uh, I always come back to Real Madrid. I don't know. <laughs> after the after Carlo Ancelotti was sacked, many expected uh, uh, should I say uh, Zinedine Zidane to come up and take, but he stayed put and continued with his with his B team uh, to see what next. The, the 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 Benitez came and tried was not going. That's when they gave it to him. They so him do up. you? I feel that do you song feel is still song may come in before 2021? Possibly, it's possible. And um, I think this man is lucky. Should I say Tony is a lucky man because he doesn't have that pressure to prove something now. Exactly. It is just about uh, maybe the friendly matches and majority of his opponents. They are those teams that have already established themselves. Maybe they are testing players. And Tony could use that to win the, 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 the should I say, the support of the fans. And uh, maybe it will take him some time. And maybe if he should be sacked, 
I don't know it should be the AFCON 2021. <laughs> <laughs> that would be disastrous. And talking about AFCON 2021, we go down memory lane to say the last time and the only time that Cameroon hosted the number one uh, African competition was back in 1972. And it didn't go down all well. We were knocked out at the semi-final level by Democratic Republic of Congo in Yaoundé. It was such a disappointing finale for us. We we're expecting to lift the cup uh, on home soil. And now the next time is 2021. How huge is it? How historic a moment can it be? And uh, we are talking about bringing a foreigner who doesn't really have the profile, a huge uh, a reputation, to lead Cameroon to one of the greatest moments in its sporting history. How difficult was it a decision for Faker Food to say, we are shunning Cameroonians, we are removing Cameroonians from the chase, and then we are bringing in a foreigner to lead us into arguably the greatest moment in our sporting history. Arguably. Was it right before you talk about how difficult a decision was? It? Maybe it was right, maybe it was not. If it is right, it is the fact that if you look at uh, Tony's uh, CV, he has been coaching smaller clubs, maybe in coach smaller clubs, and uh, maybe he has the ideology or the idea of bringing up young talents. Okay. And if that is the reason of choosing Tony, bringing up these young talents, and then identifying those people that we have, those great footballers, those Cameroonians that play football, maybe is who is able to bring the likes of Mbappe in Cameroon, or let's should I say the next Mbappe, or the likes of uh, the next uh, Samuel Umtiti, or even forcing the coming back of uh, the great uh, Liverpool defender, um, Matip. Matip, back to the Lion. Maybe these are, these are the qualities of Tony. If these are the qualities, then I think it's a good choice. But if these are the, not the qualities, then I doubt any other thing that motivated them to bring in this man. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was it about the Cameroon national team. Always when we have you around, we cannot <laughs> let go of you without talking about uh, some European football. <laughs> the action has, uh, has been quite interesting in Europe across the five major leagues. And we begin in England very briefly where Manchester City have won eight on eight. There is Liverpool. no stopping. Liverpool yes. have won eight on eight. There is no stopping the Reds this time around. It is 17 wins on the bounce in the English top flight. Uh, Manchester City have stumbled a couple of times. This weekend, they stumbled again, shockingly at home uh, to, uh, to, um, to Wolves, to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Do you think it's finally the moment for Liverpool? I always uh, <laughs> troll Liverpool fans by saying every year you say it's your year. <laughs> Do you think this is actually the year for Liverpool? I think Last year, I thought it was the same thing. Now it is eight points gap between Manchester City and uh, Liverpool. I think uh, Manchester City, a team coached by Pep Guardiola, can never write them off. <laughs> Last year, it was seven but points. But it, it depends now on Liverpool. If they keep winning their games, that it is depends a problem. on them. That is a problem. Last year, it was in December. The first round ended with seven points gap. Liverpool was really leading seven points. And the way they came back, the points started reducing. Liverpool was, uh, they were not losing matches. They were drawing. And City were winning. And uh, the one that killed Liverpool was the match against uh, Liverpool played against City. And Manchester City, Liverpool went and slept and uh, Manchester City trashed them. That is where the problem came. So I think it is still too early to say right Liverpool, City yes. If City was at this position, eight points, a leading City. We could say it's over. I could over. say it's over. Okay, and uh, still in England, before leaving England, a word on Tottenham Hotspur. Before the season began, Jose Mourinho, uh, top-notch coach Jose Mourinho said there are four teams vying for the title in England. We have Liverpool, Manchester City, uh, Tottenham, and Manchester City beat him. That was in another way saying mm -hmm. Manchester City are way stronger than anyone else. But now he made mention of Tottenham Hotspur. Hotspurs is a team that has gone a couple of seasons without spending a penny on the transfer market and then they made it to the Champions League finals and then they get to spend so much money and everybody goes like wow Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur maybe this is the year when uh, they, they, they break the duopoly of Liverpool and City in England or they take that final ditch to winning the UCL in Europe what has gone wrong? The wheels have suddenly come off and the car is all over the place. I feel the first thing that has gone wrong with uh, Tottenham, I don't know if I'm wrong, but from the observation, from the matches and the players, the reaction, I feel there is lack of motivation. I don't know if, uh, if the coach uh, Pochettino is losing it. 
I don't know if he's losing the dressing room. If that is the case, they call then him Big Brother. They call him Big Brother, but I don't know what's the matter. Because if you look at um, Ericsson Blaine, you feel that he lack, he is not motivated. Maybe they he doesn't want to rumor, play for the club. The transfer rumor to England, I mean to, to, to Spain. Spain, is really accumulating. And maybe he feel that he deserves better. So I don't know what is really the matter, but I think it is at uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the disposal of Pochettino to do something and do it fast. Okay, we cross over to La Liga and surprisingly Real Madrid are Not at the top of the table. <laughs> what a surprise regarding the summer moves and the dismal performances Real shipped in, uh, in pre-season games. We think it's a surprise. The year that Real Madrid won the double, that is the Champions League and the, the, and the La Liga, they, 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 I think they, they did not win any match in the preseason. And everybody was, was complaining that Zidane came and enjoyed what uh, Benitez has been producing during the preseason. Meaning this second season he's going to suffer because he, his performance in the, in the preseason was poor. And he came up, he suffered in the prison and he came up, he galvanized his players, work with the, what he is having. At the end of the day, he won both the La Liga and, uh, and, and the Champions League. And so I think with Real Madrid, it is not to ride them off at the level of, uh, of the preseason. They are already big boys. <laughs> <laughs> and the question everyone is asking is, what changed after the PSG three new trashing? Nothing big. There is nothing big. I think it's, it's just uh, the three nil. The big problem there was, you know, the big brother and the defense line was not there. We know him very well, Sergio Ramos. He is uh, he is a player and at the same time playing the role of a coach, maybe galvanizing players on the pitch. And whenever you don't see Ramos on the pitch, know that there is a problem with Real Madrid. And whenever he's there, they might suffer a defeat, but not that humiliation. So I think whenever he is there, he try to give them the confidence. Because he's not a player, he, like I say, he's a leader. He can, he can uh, maybe he can stop the coach at any time and tell him what you're doing is not right. He can stop the president and say, all these are not good, these moves are not good. We are Real Madrid, this is what we deserve. So I think it is that big elder brother that they lack at the defense. That is what, um, what gave the chances for, for Di Maria and Co to swim. And finally, Eden Hazard living up to his billing, getting a goal and an assist. Hopefully he continues. But I think, um, I still say this, uh, Eden Hazard is a good player for Real Madrid, but it, it was a good move for Real, but I don't think it was a good move for Hazard. Because he's the, what the fans in Real are expecting are different. 30 from, plus goals. Yes, they are But he is not an out and out goal scorer like a Ronaldo. He but, won't get you 30 goals. But he, they expect the performance of Luka Modric. Someone who can give assists and maybe score 10 and then be, perf be perform week in, week out. We know the hazard we know very well in Chelsea, in, 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 uh, in Premier League. He performed for a single season and sleep for two seasons. So maybe it is his chance to wake up and work. But I think it's a good move for Real, but not a good move for, Zira, for, 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 for Hazard. <laughs> That's a technical one. Thank you so much, Adamu Shaibu, for taking us through the world of football. You're welcome, Adi. And hopefully next week we get to talk about Serie A, the French League, and so many, so many things to talk about in Europe. And of course, the, uh, the UEFA Champions League, which has begun already. Exactly. Inshallah. It's always a pleasure, a pleasure to be here with you. Exactly. The pleasure is always us, and the pleasure is yours too, who are watching us right now from our studios in Tekase here in Yaoundé and if you're just coming back from work we say welcome and for those on the dinner table we say bon appétit after the break we unveil a talking point
welcome back on set and if you're just joining us you are the right avenue for information and entertainment it is 360 degrees coming to you live from canal 7 studios in yaoundé capital of cameroon and right now in the program it is time for our talking point and talking point today we are observing world teachers day and uh, it was celebrated worldwide and in cameroon on the 5th of october and uh, that was Saturday and many teachers celebrated in boisterous manner. But today we are examining uh, different perspective opinions with regard to this day, the challenges teachers face and the ways that can render teaching more profitable and uh, of course more fruitful in Cameroon. And uh, to talk that with us here, we have um, Ben Humphrey who has joined us. Good evening. Good evening, Tiva. How are you doing? No, I'm doing well. You seem uh, a little bit uh, cold. <laughs> Did the rain hit you? <laughs> it's the weather. It's uh, not really the best out there. Okay, not really the best. Uh Okay, uh, hopefully it will be fine in the evening. Yeah, in the course of the program. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome. And of course, we still have Shaibu here. A pleasure. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, Teacher's Day? Is it worth celebrating as uh, going out, drinking in bars, as we observed? Maybe, maybe yes. But I feel that, that many teachers are getting it wrong. Okay. The first thing when we talk about teachers, the, the teachers they talk about pay. It's true. They always are uh, always. I saw a lot of interviews. Teachers were complaining that the pay package is small for teachers. So I think it is true, it is small. But the first thing we should think of now should not be that pay. We should look at what? We should look at what a teacher is supposed to do in Cameroon. And is that teacher doing what a teacher is supposed to do? Those are the things that we have to look, at, look in. Because in this our country, Cameroon, the teachers are the nation builders. Because the teachers can decide to tell the child, the child is innocent. Whatever he or she is told, that child just pick it up and grow with it. I remember the things I, were to I was told by my teachers when I was still a kid, maybe in the primary school and so on. I still remember them today. So I think teachers are playing a role, a role of building the nation. They are nation builders. Like they say, teaching is a noble profession. So I feel they should take, take, take that, that profession in their minds, in their brains, and uh, put it in themselves, in their blood, and then they can be like in the, in the French system, there is what they call teachers uh, and the others, they call them pointer. So if there are those that are coming to work for money, I don't think they are teachers. So as a teacher, don't think of the pay first. Think of the study environment. Think of uh, maybe the, what, what you're doing. Is the teaching, is the learning teaching process being improved and so on? What to do to improve or what is the government doing to do this? So I think the government should think of improving the teaching learning process. Well, we shall get back to that. Uh, and the bottom line is that uh, government should do more. And of course, uh, but in your opinion, what were teachers celebrating? What were they celebrating? Uh, I think they are celebrating the the nobility of the profession. It's the as I said, or as a, a micro panelist earlier said, it's not just all about drinking, but it's an opportunity for teachers to express uh, their grievances, their worries, the various challenges through which they are uh, through which they are going through uh, in the course of uh, exercising the profession or uh, career. So I think this day is very, very important because it's the only forum through which uh, teachers from various parts of the country communicate with others. So a teacher might be going through a very, very tough and difficult situation, maybe in the north, maybe in the west, south, or east. And it's only uh, through uh, such a day that uh, they will gather, table their complaints uh, through the authorities that be so that they can be heard. So I think it's very, very important. It's not just all about drinking. If the, some other people think the day is just all about drinking, I actually disagree. And even you want to drink, you have to drink responsibly. You don't just have to desecrate uh, the profession. As I earlier said, it's a very noble profession. Exactly. Uh, now looking at the profession itself, we say it's a noble profession, but yes. that is scripted. 
do you think teachers are underrated in society? Yes, I think they are underrated. There are people that have been uh, underrated in this in the society, and teachers are one of them, and uh, doctors are one of them. The politicians have taken the, 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 the everything. So I think teachers should be given the position they deserve because they are building the nation. They are the nation builders, not the politicians. The politicians are just, they are just using what the teachers are building. So I think the teachers should be given that chance, that chance that they respond, they sit that the teacher deserves. And should that come with a huge pay package to Actually. say, okay, because we now rate you as you worth it, we are going to pay you heavily. It's, it's uh, very certain, and that is how it should be. Uh, if you have to look, uh, teachers are what we call in the, we put in uh, pigeon parlance, shoe menders. Teachers, if you look at teachers, they are the mender of, in short, souls, of bad minds. They are the one that are to be looked up to, for every society to be hoping to get wherever they are going to. And if they are not encouraged, how will you expect them to, uh, to exercise uh, the best of them when uh, they are not living in good conditions? Just as my uh, co-panelist earlier said, uh, the government has to really look into this thing. They shouldn't just look at teachers as people who are frustrated. They are the people the society looks up to. Whoever is what tomorrow or now is uh, because of a teacher, and we should not uh, look at them we should, be give, we should give them the tribute, the homage they deserve for the job they are doing. And we should really make the profession noble by uh, not just making people understand that it is uh, maybe the last option if you lack something doing. No. So I think that uh, we should really raise the statute of teachers in the society and give them the respect they deserve especially dedicated teachers it's yes. always good to say dedicated, dedicated. teachers because yes. we have teachers <laughs> who practically don't do their job yeah. appropriately in cameroon we have two uh, we have two uh, categories of teachers we have uh, teachers government state employed teachers and we have teachers in the private sector and uh, there is this general feeling that those in the private sector even tend to do better. a better job they are more committed than those who are actually trained to do the job yes Adi, i think uh is the feeling that many of us have because many of these schools the private schools we see they there is effective follow-up more than the government schools there because it is a business that everyone wants it to grow and there is a effective follow-up and we end up seeing that the teachers who are working with the private sector they gain more experience in teaching than those in the government sector because those of the government sector they are just free to do anything they want but those in from the private sector they have some limitations you do this you don't do this and they follow up they, they follow them up very well at the end of the day you discover that those working with the government sector they, they, are, they, are, they are they are they are free but those working with the private sector they end up being better teachers and um, uh, coming back to something Adi, i feel that like uh, my my colleague was saying teachers are not well respected. I followed one, I attended one uh, seminar where uh, that is, uh, these delegates are talking and uh, inspectors are talking to teachers. And one inspector was bold enough to say teachers should not beat children. And he did not end there. He said his child was beaten one day in school. He moved, he, he, he took his car and went to that school, warned that, that, that teacher. That why, do you, why why should you beat must you beat my child and at the day the day you try to beat my child again you will be in prison. So you see this thing this thing is happening it is happening but remember that the teacher did not leave his or her own house in the morning pay a taxi to go and beat your child and then come back. The teacher is teaching your child and maybe your child is not following up and when we ask him what happened he said because the child did not do assignments. And uh, if a teacher is beating your child because your child did not do assignment, and you take him, you lock him up because because maybe you are a politician or something, you are already losing it because you are already telling your child that you am you are, you my child you are more important than the teacher, and simply because you are the son of a politician, you can do whatever you want. You do your assignment or you don't do them. You write or you feel because he, he told the teacher that if my child feels I'm the one responsible, not you, the teacher. 
So such things, I think we should ignore them and we should be, we should be good, we good, uh, should I say good uh, people, and then we should be responsible enough. If you have to do something, be responsible and think that this what this teacher is doing is building up the nation, building up the children, and then correcting their mistakes rather than saying that I should be the one correcting my uh, the mistakes and if my child feels it's not your problem it's not your responsibility as a teacher so i think we are losing it we should give the teacher that the position the teacher deserves exactly we should give the teacher the position he or she deserves now what role does teaching play in uh, the growth of a nation in the moral growth of a nation uh i think teaching uh as a moral profession, it has a very significant role to play. It's a, the, any type of uh, society we have, what we have to do is, uh, it's all about the type of teaching the child receives uh, from the teachers that be. And uh, we should not miss it. When we are talking about teachers, we are not only maybe uh, limited, only those in school. Teaching is in various uh, dimensions. So whatever is uh, mirrored of a society is based on the type of teaching a child uh, uh, may, maybe is given. So I think that if the children are given uh, the moral education, the moral teachings on what they, they deserve, that you have to respect that as a child you have to uh, be humble, you have to, uh, when you're passing around, you have to greet an elder. I think is uh, going to be uh, uh, something very good and give a moral hope to the society. I think okay. that's what uh, I can say. We, we all have been through school. Who to you is that perfect teacher? I'm not asking so you, you speak from the perspective of uh, professionalism, yes. but as a student, having been through so many classrooms, who to you is that perfect teacher? I think a good teacher is someone who follow up uh, a weak student and then evaluate him, him or herself by the amelioration of that weak student. Maybe a student who is not catching up and uh, the student begins to catch up, you say, wow, I'm a good teacher. You don't evaluate by yourself by maybe saying that you have intelligent students in your class because they're always intelligent students. How to make sure that the weak students come up and at least increase and keep on imp improving on what they are doing. So I think that is the level that we evaluate good teachers. But how difficult is doing that in uh, the Cameroonian context nowadays when we find classrooms with over a hundred st students, some don't even have where to sit? That is very, very difficult and very, very complicated. And if you see the classroom situation, uh, there are so many students in the class, more than 30, to manage the class is very, very difficult. And maybe identify, to identify the weak student will take you a longer time, a very long time to identify the weak students and then begin to, to follow them up. So in Cameroon, there is that problem, like you said, there is that problem. But a good teacher will still look for an alternative. That is right. Or at least try to impact something in, even if it's just one good. of the When you students. go in, the first thing you try to tell the stu students what is good for them. So that tomorrow, if you are not there, they will do it. But if you try to just beat them if they are doing something wrong, tomorrow when you are not there, they will be the first to run and then do this because you are not around. So try to tell them that it is their future, their building, and then give something in their brains so that as they are growing up, they are conscious that what they are doing is this is what is good for them. And so that even if you are not there tomorrow, they can think and then say, no, this is good and let's do it. Well, rightfully said. Okay, who to you is that good teacher based on your experience in the classrooms? A good teacher is one who is humble. I'm not saying some teachers are arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> humble in the sense that the teacher is uh, ready and willing to entertain a question from students. No matter how foolish the question is, try to direct the student on how uh, to go about it. You don't just tell a student that, or a child that, uh, maybe just keep, uh, tell a student to keep quiet because he asks uh, a particular type of question. There is something which uh, must have uh, motivated that student to ask that question. So you should equally embrace humility in the course of the profession. I think that's the best type of teacher, one who is humble and is ready to entertain a question, whether it's a child 
or whoever uh, comes up to he or she to ask a question for direction or for whatever. Okay, uh, we have been talking so much about maybe the, the, the basic educational milieu and the secondary educational milieu. Let's take it now to the uh, higher educational milieu, the university system. Lecturers are equally teachers. Yes. Do you think with um, the inavailability of uh, research tools and uh, libraries and all what not that has to power uh, university education, lecturers have to do more than they are doing? I'm talking based on uh, observation and even experience uh, where we find lecturers who come to class and do basically nothing. Mm -hmm. Some just give out uh, their scheme of work and that's all. And they don't take time to really teach. Lecturers are no longer teachers. Do you think due to uh, the system and inavailability of the, um, uh, libraries and uh, maybe research tools, they should do more? Yes, um, I think I did. Uh, I'll take more of here uh, the state universities we have around. I think the main thing that is disturbing here is because we feel that at a particular level we have attained something, and then we have nothing to prove. That at some point, that some lecturers have to prove themselves that they are good lecturers. There are others who have already attained a certain level that they don't need to prove themselves. So whatever they are doing is good, it's okay. Because they don't think that they will be disproved somewhere. So at this level, if we think that oh, we are already big enough and we cannot be dis or maybe we cannot be discredited somewhere somehow, it is becoming a problem. Because a good teacher should be someone who is learning every day and is keep on who is improving. But at the level of the university, like I'm saying, the big lecturers in quotes that we know, majority of them, I'm not saying all, majority of them don't care whether what they are doing is good or not. They just maybe want to cover their program and then they disappear or they will do whatsoever they have been doing every day. They don't have that pressure to do what is good. They just do what is good depending on them and then they cover whatsoever they want to cover. They don't think they have an assignment to do something and that they must do it. I think that is the main thing we have, the problem of having attained where you wanted to attain and you don't feel you have any pressure to improve. And many of them feel they are untouchable. Yes. There's no one who can directly influence their pay package that is it. or whatsoever. Your opinion? It's very true. It's uh, an experience I've had in the university that uh, you even go to call a lecturer or you ask a lecturer whether will you be in class or will you be coming? The lecturer tells you, who are you? Uh, <laughs> so all those types of things, they do not really feel that maybe uh, they still owe a lot to the students. And don't think you've arrived at the apex, whether you are at the university or what. A child can still challenge your records. So I think we should really give uh, this uh, profession, the nobility it is. Uh, we should make people admire it, not just uh, from the pay perspective, but from the way you uh, are dedicated to uh, the profession or career. Okay, Teachers Day uh, 2019 is coming at a time when uh, uh, popular investigative Ghanaian journalist Anas has uh, worked in collaboration with the British Broadcasting Media, the BBC, to carry out a secret investigation and expose lecturers who have been demanding sex from female students in exchange for marks. And today, the documentary was aired for the first time and it has received huge, huge, huge uh, attention. And of course, there have been thousands of reactions. And uh, of course, the first, uh, I can say the first predators have been made known to the public. We have two Ghanaian lecturers who have uh, been exposed already. And uh, these lecturers demand sex from female students. You find a lecturer who is married uh, molesting a female student. And in, in such cases, as it is explained, uh, when these students don't yield to those demands, they nail the students, they <laughs> nail the students. So it's really a serious problem. Yes, Adi, it's a very big problem. I think uh, if, in fact, all over the world, I don't think there is a country that is safe. Maybe the percentage can differ, but uh, maybe it is a better at uh, the, uh, maybe at the primary or the secondary whatsoever, but at the level of the university is very common because the girl they, they are looking for max and at a particular point 
I okay, don't you know. think the ladies are looking good for Max more than the lecturers once maybe maybe I am taking it from the perspective of the state universities okay they come here because a lecturer can just block your article and then block you from achieving something maybe you something that you can achieve for three years you might hit for 10 years without achieving that and see these ideas have given the this ideology have been transferred now to the ladies they feel that come on why not take the easy way and they just you cannot and then you are okay so this this thing is very very dangerous the ladies want max and it is the, 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 the lecturers too they want the ladies and they want to use the ideology of having those marks to achieve their objective, which is very common and is a very bad habit. And I think if the world can eradicate that, then HIV AIDS is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> to what extent can we blame the, the students? Uh, we can only blame them in the sense that there are some students who deliberately boycott classes, boycott uh, examinations just to get uh, to the teachers after uh, indirectly seduce them in the maybe saying they never wrote or whatever those are some of the things i think not only the lecturers so not all the lecturers who fall into those things uh, do that willingly but the behavior of the students too is uh, what uh, I've, I've been noticing you see students who don't attend classes who don't come to school, they know that uh, at the end, I have somebody around, I have somebody, and he already has, she, the lady already believes that the body is already a resource for her. Yes, exactly. That you can be yeah. Who don't come to class, but when results are posted, you you get them. They have eighty percent, and you're asking yourself, when, how did she reap all the marks? So all those things, you we are not only looking at it. It's not only uh, ladies. I think uh, from what uh, we've been able to see, the not only that journalist is uh, revealing it, uh, it. Those are things that were long revealed in books written by even Cameroonians. If you have to look like a book uh, written by uh, across the Mongolo, uh, the situation of Ngwe, when he re repeats uh, the university for several years, it's as a result of uh, a conflict. He has over a lady with uh, a lecturer. And all those things you see coming into, uh, in short, disturbing students from going ahead. So. I think it should be looked into. Okay, now let's come back to the secondary education media. We have um, young boys who go to uh, higher teacher training college, ENS, maybe at the age of even 21, they start teaching at 24 or even 26. That's still relatively young. Uh, they are not married. Most of them live in celibacy. Is it wrong for them to look at an upper six or lower <laughs> six girl to say, okay, you could be my future, uh, madam? Is it wrong? to do that no maybe if you are coming for the perspective you want her to be your wife that is different you first of all if, if you are truly in need of her to be your wife the first thing is who who what is what is what is your what is the classification or maybe what is the criteria for your f future wife obviously it's someone who is honest someone who is cool and then someone who should achieve that maybe uh, the results and they continue you know you start disturbing her at that level then you know that you are you are, you are either maybe fooling yourself or you are trying to fool the, the lady. So I think at this level is the lady to sit and then focus on her education. And then it is her chance to tell you, because at the lower seat or maybe at, it's true that we still have kids there, but they will tell you that maybe see you after advanced level. Yes. After advanced level, you come on and see me. So don't start chasing that lady when she's still in lower seat or in upper seat. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask you this question. You are in the place of that teacher, uh, and this very beautiful lady comes up to you. She's in upper six, lower six. What's your first reaction? I think it's not only the teacher. I, I remember uh, when I was in secondary school, being a prefect, if you look, at times, uh, you have to preserve your personality f for some certain reasons. And dissatisfy your heart? <laughs> Temporarily, <laughs> because you don't know what the students 
go and sit and talk about Daisy, you. Daisy. You understand? So most of the time when I used to even annoy a lady, I I just have to be patient, control myself because I just imagine that when the student go and sit with the others and I'm passing in, in white shirt as a prefect, they say, look at this man, when, just like they were saying, PG, he did just make for there when he could come back where he can see me. You look at all those, I just imagine all those things and I feel it's an attack on my personality. So the teachers should equally understand and try to mold up the child indirectly, not maybe trying to uh, set uh, the pace um, when the child does not yet understand what uh, will be the end. Wow, thank you very much. Maybe a last word to teachers out there uh, with, the, uh, in regard to, with regard to the commemoration of uh, World Teachers Day. Yes, the only thing I would say is that teachers are, they, they are the nation builders. They are responsible, they should be responsible always. Like I say, it's a noble profession and let them, let every teacher remain noble and responsible. Okay, last word. Thank you to all teachers. If I'm talking here, yeah, it's uh, because thanks of it. Teacher. Thanks to a teacher. So, thank you, gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is here we call it quit on today's edition of the 60 Degrees. Hoping that you take the rendezvous with us same time next week, same hour, with the same brand of gentlemen to dish it out to you in the most honorable fashion. At your service, 60 Degrees. Bye bye.